that supports soundly the way that he presents it? Not yet. No, I see a lot of mirroring effects and weird optical bullshit, but nothing bendy, no bendy water yet, bro. What about the what about the pylons or the bridge? Does it look like the pylons of the bridge are bending, or does it look like they're straight? Uh, they, they it, where I took the footage right now, it inconclusive big time. Now, what I'm going in right now is like right almost under the bridge. That and then I'll, I will tell you then in like maybe 15 or 20 minutes, I'll let you guys know if. Well, how am I gonna be getting something? You know. Cool. That's you what. Got anything need. online yet? Um, no, not yet. I'm four minutes away from my second spot. Maybe in six or seven minutes, I'll be uh, videotaping there. Cool. Okay. Good awesome. luck. Yeah, I'll keep you that, uh, guys posted oh, uh, throughout oh, the day. Hold on, and if possible, try to find the exact same uh, road that Soundly was basically filming from, so you can try to emulate the path and then lay it right next to Soundly's footage to see, yeah, to, to have a literal comparison and maybe we can spot how it was edited, if it was edited. Yeah, right now what I'm going is one of the exact spots. He took the video, uh, one of the videos. So That's I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there and then I'll, I'll let you guys know. Cool. Cool. Thanks. All right, I'm jumping out. The signal is really bad. I'll let you guys know throughout the day. All cool. right. Hey, see you later, Jose. See you later. Oh, by the way, did anyone catch Hori's show yesterday? Some of it. I went to bed. Pretty cool. <laughs> In the Tesla car. Yeah, yeah. That guy really knows how to set his stage. It's hilarious. So, when is the show starting? Probably gonna be soon. All right, one minute. Uh, what time? I'm gonna take a smoke, guys. I'll be right back. Cool. Okay, thanks. Bye. For when? No, it's not worth doing yet. Correct. Remember building seven. Yep. Hey, is that Travis? Yeah. Are we? Are you out on the road again? I'm uh, on a layover. Cool. He dead quiet though. Well, I can't please you. I make too much noise in my truck and then I'm too quiet. You're never happy. Fair, po fair point well made. <laughs> oh, by the way, I actually had a pretty good talk with Alan B behind the screens yesterday. For like does, does he know that it was a joke or does he think it's real? What? The um, Scott, M. Scott Beach stuff. No, apparently he doesn't know. I, I tried to probe him on that, but he <laughs> thinks it's just fake because it came from you. But he had a very <laughs> abrupt view on that and he didn't actually notice any of the details except for his name. <laughs> so it was very weird. He thought it was fake, but not for the right reasons. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Man, it is stormy as fuck out here.
Check, check. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. All right, let's do it. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you're new to this channel, or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and there's also a PayPal link in the info box below the video once it's rendered. But most importantly, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by the Plain Truth, Sleeping Warrior. Are we going to get a beep beep? Ranty Flat Earth oh, and Arwin. I'm not, I'm not in my truck right now. Ah, I was hey, waiting for it. Nice. Good to have You're you all. Coming. Remember Building 7. Good afternoon, by the way. Good afternoon, Good afternoon to you everybody. Yeah. Any news before I do housekeeping? Anything anybody wants to sneak in? Clearly not. We've it's got. Uh, ho here. Hopefully, we're going to be joined periodically by Jose Gonzalez, who will be showing us various different, uh, I don't know, presumably live streamed angles from his mobile phone because he's not going to be able to I, give us his. Uh, I, his I don't know if he's going to live stream it though. Oh, he has done it already. He's done it a couple of times, so I believe. Oh, really? Okay. Well, You're one making... for sure that I definitely saw. So I definitely know he's there. I definitely know he's got his camera on his tripod and he did do a live stream about 30 minutes ago. Oh, right. Cool. Well, he's joined the show, so he, before we started, I, I started the recording slightly early, which I wouldn't typically do before the beginning of the show, but just because Jose joined and was like, look, I'm another two or three miles away from the next location. I've been to one location, it was inconclusive. I've been to this location and got a load of mirroring. Very excited and just basically giving us updates on what he's doing over at Pontra Train. So hopefully he'll join. If he does, he'll just turn his camera on and point it at whatever he's looking at. So it won't be anywhere near as good as a P900 on a tripod pointing down the line of that bridge, but it will still be a, a gauge of what he's you know, roughly what you can see hopefully on this stream. So with a little bit of luck, we will be joined by Jose Gonzalez at some point during the show, as he is currently in Pontchartrain, literally as we speak. All right. Shout out to Hori Shicho, who is uh, currently floating in the outer space in his Tesla. It was just CGI. It was. It was. <laughs> wow. So, any That's signs of curvature, real. gentlemen? Let's kick off with housekeeping. Uh, no, I went looking again today. Didn't find any, but I did see a lot of flat. Put it on my on my channel. So, if you haven't seen it yet, go and have a look. What you mean, more flat Earth evidence? More flat Earth, flat as a pancake. No curvature to be found. Eighteen point seven miles, I believe, today. So, yeah, put that one in your pack and smoke it, ballers. Awesome. Any signs of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? No. Nope. No. Nope. No. Any scientific evidence of gravity? No. Nope. No. Any no scientific proof? No. Any evidence whatsoever of gas pressure without a container? Only on that chalkboard from that guy that you posted. Well, no, he wasn't demonstrating no, 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 gas no, no, pressure no, no, without a right. container. Far from it. He was just some random guy, wasn't he? Nobody special. Well, he was an MIT no, tutor. You're, you're on about conspiracy cats. No. No, Nathan's a uh, little... Uh... Well, no, Ranty's on about somebody that's not... We were on about. We're talking about the MIT bloke. Yeah, that's who I was on about. Well, oh, right. Is he a random, non-important guy, Britain, then? 
Yeah, I was being sarcastic, but you, it went over your head, Anthony. Never mind. Oh no, I thought you were talking about conspiracy cats. That's why. I didn't. Re- I didn't realize you'd seen the video that made you uh, made your statement like confusing. Because I thought if you'd have seen the video of the MIT guy reasserting our position for us, then perhaps that wouldn't have been considered uh, incredulous. But the conspiracy cats one, which was the opposing position without a container, there can be no pressure. That is the one that's the um, the, the problem one. So I thought perhaps you were talking about conspiracy cats. Um, in the absence of seeing the other video, but in, obviously you have seen the other video, but that states clearly that you can't have the pressure of space or you can't have the, the pressure of Earth next to the vacuum of space without some kind of membrane. So well, if you haven't two, seen that video, check it out. It's two opposing positions. You have a, a GCSE teacher who says that it, you, uh, you know, has one option, and then you have an MIT professor who has a, another option. So it's which one you would rather believe on that subject. No, that's not true. They're both putting the same exact thing forward. Conspiracy cats, I use his clip of him saying, without the balloon, there is no pressure. And essentially the balloon is obviously the barrier in this instance, the thing between the different pressure systems. So we've got atmospheric sy- uh, pressure and then an increased pressure in a balloon. Well, if you get rid of the balloon itself, there's no longer a gas pressure. It just dissipates through entropy. That's conspiracy cats point. Now the MIT guy is essentially saying the same thing. He's saying here you have gas pressure and next to it you have a vacuum. If you remove the barrier between them, you have entropy. One disperses instantaneously into the other. However, Conspiracy Cat says that no, there's an equilibrium that can be met which is able to sustain a pressure next to a vacuum. Whereas the MIT guy basically says that isn't the case. You know, it would be an instantaneous gun. Yeah, entropy. Second law of thermodynamics. Now, as much as, you know, let's not be beating around the bush here. The MIT guy does trump the GCSE teacher in terms of this information. And both of them are singing from the same hymn sheet in terms of if you don't have a container, you don't have pressure. You don't have PSI. Yeah. You've got nothing to press on and you don't have a pounds per square inch value to get. You can't have the pounds per square inch value pressing against nothingness of space. That's a contradiction in terms. It has to be pressing on something to give you a PSI value. Is somebody pushing a wheelbarrow? <laughs> That's in the night garden train set that my kid's playing with. <laughs> okay, right, let's move so- on. So, any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? Uh, no. no, and when they say, uh, "Show us that," show us that. What do they get? show us the ice wall? And we show them the ice wall, and they don't accept it. Well, we want to see that molten iron core that you guys tell us is there, and you can't, won't, and never will, because the deepest that anybody's ever gone is about eight miles. The Cold Deep Super Borehole. Are you trying to say that they're just guessing what's at the centre of the Earth? Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what I'm saying. They're guessing it based on um, oh, seismogra- seismology. Uh, which turned out to be inaccurate in this cold deep super borehole because they were predicting that lots of stuff would come back out but they didn't expect lots of hydrogen mud boiling hydrogen mud was the phrase that they used and they were not expecting that and i wonder well why were you not expecting that were you not able to predict that using your spectroscopy or your whatever it is that you claim that you could claim claims where you could predict this for model Model. no but they did send some iron though no they didn't they didn't (laughs) Have you got any evidence for that, please? Because I've looked deep into this and they never found any iron. There's no evidence that I found that they found any iron. Really? N- none at all? None. It was boiling hydrogen mud was the main composite of what came back up. There was water, boiling hydrogen mud, and a few other elements, but they didn't get any iron. It was not, not reported in the information that they did get. So no. unless, unless you can produce something that says that that's true, I'm, I, I'm calling you on that because that's not what I've found. Okay, could be. Any, ev- information for me? any evidence of the presupposition itself? So, any evidence nope. of Earth radius? Ah, no, nope. gentlemen. There is no evidence of presuppositions. It's a contradiction in turn. That's correct, Darwin. Well put. What about the distance to the sun? <laughs> there is nope. none. There's only virtual distance. Correct. Relative distances, Darwin. That's exactly what we have. No, 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 not relative, virtual. It just appears to be at a distance. There is no literal distance. Yeah, 
Relative. Yeah. Happy to no, but relative is, is in comparison to something else. That's literally yeah, that's what, they what do. relative is. That's it's what they not do. relative, it it's is. apparent. Well, same thing. Let's agree to disagree on this one, but we're all singing from the same hem sheet, are we? This is not, nece not necessary of a row. I actually thought I was agreeing with you. You were. So you're, you were both you're agreeing a, with each you other. You were trying to, but the terminology was a little bit lacking. That's all. Yeah, you're just a not bit really. lacking. I'm English. being nitpicky, okay? I know you are. Semantic or pedantic. Pedantic. Pedantic's the word, yeah. Pedantic. It's a nice word. It is a good word. Right, anyway. Yeah, but if you're pedantic though, Alwyn, it makes you a pedant, and I'm not sure that being a pedant is a good word to be. A pedant? Yes, that's the singular. Okay. <laughs> Nobody wants to be a pedant, so let's not be pedantic. Okay. <laughs> anyway, when you're all done being tempestuous, let's move on. Ooh, this what? is the English lesson today. <laughs> tempestuous? tempestuous? Let's move on. Any is, evidence? That like, is that with a temper, or what is that? I don't oh. know, we're going to have to look it up. Check it out. Have you made another word up, Anthony? You're being stormy. No, he's being stormy. <laughs> it means characterized by strong and turbulent or conflicting emotions. Huh. Well, <laughs> I guess I would be tempestuous. You definitely are on some topics. Well, I've... <laughs> well, what in particular? No, I am strong and turbulent, and I have a lot of conflicting emotions that... That, that ruin you, Arwin. Just want to Sometimes. point out that it's, the time is 9-11 right now. Ooh. Ah. I've, I've been waiting for all the memes on uh, Facebook. I've not, I've oh, done... by the way, yeah. Uh, it's happy birthday to Christ. Christ? Yeah, I think that 9-11 was supposed to be his birthday. I heard that. Oh, do I have to ask for evidence for this? <sighs> it's just a rumor. But oh. I've heard it before. Oh, right. I have to do some digging to. Uh, I've heard that too. It. It's, I think, I'm, I'm sure it's been extrapolated out from the stars. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, by the way, did you see Mike Helmick's video on the stars? Polaris, particularly. It's very uh, interesting. Can we move on to the last housekeeping? Have we got more housekeeping? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Any signs of M. Scott Beach? Exactly. <laughs> um, Alan tells me that he is alive. I don't know how. Uh, he sent me a screenshot. Let's have a look. I did read it. Uh, yeah, remember. Alan B says that M. Scott Veach is currently working on, uh, well, on, on his project as a direct. No, what? No, as a screenwriter. So he's very busy currently. That's right. why he's not uh, making appearances, according to Alan B. I've had a message from Alan B that is supposed to be from M. Scott Veach himself. I, I, I want to present it, Nath. Can I put my screen up? Can in a minute. I'm just playing through the um, the housekeeping just so it's on screen at least once. Well, he says, uh, tell Riley that's because he's dead to me. So I'm not quite sure what the question was in or the statement was to provoke that response. Um, but I think it must have been along the lines of Riley thinks that you're dead. But I was only reading about the news. That there was a newspaper article from somewhere on the internet that said that there was an employee of NASA killed in an accident in work, and uh, it was just suggested that his eyeballs were on the floor of the vacuum chamber, so I was just wondering if it was in. It's a yeah, similar it's scenario. A it's a similar scenario to M. Scott Beach writing for Cora about the vacuum of space. Obviously, just writing something and having it published doesn't make it true. But, you know, we're just quoting what we see in the news, like a lot of people do. Yeah. So is that the last of it, or have we got a bit more? <sighs> I'll, just, I'll just give up. Huh? I'll give up and present you. No, no, I'm good. I don't need to. I've said it now. We're good. Ah, okay. Well, there we go. Back on the uh, usual video. Well, where are we at? Are we finishing housekeeping or are we done? We're, We're done. We're done. That's it. Oh, right. Okay. So, hmm. Should I... <clears throat> I've got um, the, 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 the Sean Hufford, like, audio fraud thing is uh, a, a current topic. And there is an update on it. But I'm wondering, should I do it now, in the middle, or at the end? Do it now. Get it out of the way. Yeah. All right. 
Um, in that case, then I need to present my screen. Uh, just let me just bear with me while I get the picture that I need, which is the yeah. Right, so screen share this and we're good to go now, Nath. Yep, great. Right, the, what's happening is the point's being obfuscated and it, it's it's not acceptable because this is one of the things that we need to stop happening and we do and that's why the ballers don't come in anymore. So we're not, I'm not going to allow this to be obfuscated. I'm going to remind people of what the position is and who's got to prove what here. Um, so the original assertion by me was that Gio was being fed by Soundly, okay? And the evidence that supported that was that um, we played it back numerous times and showed that so soundly was in the background talking to somebody um geo asks the question where is it down here right and then soundly responds with a yeah and then he says go back to that definition site e sites too um but however you interpret that it's interpretation at that point the counter to that because remember the burden lies with the one that makes the assertion the counter was the sound came from riley's mic now, it, at the time, it, the sound was supposed to be a hangout that Riley was listening to, and Sean made big a big deal about it being, um, he's listening to my hangout on his channel. What a fucking dick, or something like that. So his assertion was um, it was a hangout that came from my microphone. Um, and the evidence to support it has not materialized. There has been no hangout that, that, that Sean claimed, um, and that point needs to be dropped by Sean or produce the hangout. Now, he's, he's had almost a month. In three days' time, he's had a month to find said hangout. Now, he gave me a random selection of words that Nathan had said at some point, and I found it in less than a day. It isn't difficult to do, and it can be done very easily. That that point's being obfuscated. That point's being forgotten about because of this tangent that I was reluctant to move on because I didn't know I could prove my innocence of it until Mike showed up and said, hey, I can help you here. This will show you what actually what actually was the case. Um, so what I'll do, I'll just um, I'll very quickly show this picture, um, and just really quickly go th uh, just show what this this picture showed. Now, what Mike did um, with another gent who wants to be nameless because he doesn't want to get involved in it, um, he showed that with a frequency spectrum analysis. When I speak or make any noise on my microphone, it goes up right the way up there. But when I don't speak, it doesn't go up there. That's the point. When I don't speak, it doesn't go up there. When Geo speaks, it goes up to around... This is a little bit lower. It's a little bit higher than this, but Geo's is capped significantly lower than mine. And that's the proof that my microphone was doing nothing while this section was being caught by somebody's microphone. Because if this section was recording the microphone noise on mine, it would be up here but it's not. So that, that lack in frequency proves that my microphone was not doing anything. Now, this is supported with the mouse clicks that were a little quieter, but showed that the volume went, uh, the frequency went right the way up here. Um, but this is ignored by Sean because it it basically destroys his point. Sean amplifies the hell out of um, the hangout and then still ignores where all the sound is and focuses on the background where the noise is. Sean asserts that the noise is actually sound and that this is what we're listening to. And anybody with half a brain can see that that's completely and utterly fallacious. And indeed, I've called nonsense on it and said he's either incompetent or fraudulent. Either way, that is the wrong representation of the truth. That's not true. So when Sean has given his uh, interpretation to support the sound coming from my microphone, he's amplified the hell out of the whole hangout, revealing um, native hangout noise, but is being presented as my microphone frequency but it's from an unqualified, unskilled audio guy, and this is in dispute, okay? As a result of that, I've said, Sean's either in dishonest or incompetent or both. Um, and Mike showed that basically Sean's got this completely wrong um, with the other guy. And basically this is two qualified, independently, they're unconnected to me and to each other um, using different programs, one of which program is the same program that Sean uses. And that shows that Sean doesn't know what he's doing because he should be reducing the background noise. He shouldn't be increasing it because that creates ambiguity and it's the muddle, it's the puddle of mud that Sean's doing to try and obfuscate this point. And I, I claim foul. 
but in the last 24 hours this is what this is what's happened and mike's got a little bit mixed up here with um so much i have to correct the phraseology here because he's got it backwards presumably because he focuses on the stuff that he's good at and he's not that good at the stuff what i i'm good at um this is to sean last night or this morning whichever sean we've decided to give you till saturday to come clean of your fraud libel and slander mike is going to present his analysis of the entire clip on saturday and if you haven't confessed before then he's going to take it to the next level by creating a gofundme for a third party forensic analysis no remember the burden lies with the one that's made the assertion now basically what what um mike's trying to do here is um get a gofundme for a third party analysis right but we've already <coughs> we've already presented our evidence that shows the sound came from um well the sound was in the background but it's sean's assertion that it came from my microphone we have produced evidence and, um, and proved that it didn't come from our microphone the burden lies with sean here it does not lie with us at all in any way shape or form we've produced our evidence mike it's now down to sean so this part sean's got to do because if he's going to produce evidence to counter your evidence that's that's what has to be done it can't be you producing further evidence to support your position it has to be sean that produces the counter that in other words that basically says that you're incompetent or wrong either way it's down to sean to prove this it's, this bit's not right the assertion is sean's not ours it's theirs the burden lies with them um so i'll read i'll read the, the rest of it if and when they agree your conclusion will if if and when they agree your conclusion to your conclusion, you have my word that I will kill my channel and never show my face again anywhere. If they agree with my analysis, I will expect the same from you. If you don't man up and put your money where your mouth is, we can go to the next step, which is legally determine if you are guilty of libel, fraud and slander. Bear in mind that there will be a collateral if we go there. You obviously don't know me and I dare you to call me on it if you think I'm bluffing. I'm going to echo these words in sentiment because I, I agree, I will surrender my channel, Mike will surrender his channel, and I will never show my face on Facebook, uh, on YouTube ever again. If an independent third party is produced the evidence um, with the with what which microphone recorded the sound. Now, I don't care which one it is. I've seen it on three, like from two. Hi, Neil. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Hi, Neil. Okay. Need to mute your watch page. Yeah, yeah. I'll pop you on mute while you sort yourself out. So, basically, I will. I I agree with Mike. Um, I will surrender my channel on the proviso that Sean, Geo, and Soundly surrender theirs. If third party that's in in Sean's opinion is independent, says anything different to what Mike says, Careful. and let's be clear, Mike says that the frequency of sound was recorded only on Geo's mics, not on my mic at all. What Sean's doing Get is down, amplifying the howl in the background by 40 decibels. Pardon? Oh, shit, sorry. Um, Sean's amplified the hell out of the, the, hell out of the background of the, um, the, the microphone, uh, the whole hangout, and claimed that that's proof that it came from my mic. But he's completely ignored where the sound has come from. He's created sound by created noise. Noise is not sound. Sound is sound, and he ignores the sound that's in the hangout. So I'm going to reassert. But it's based on the not on the position that we do it. It's based on the position that they've got to do it. I will surrender my channel and never appear on Facebook or YouTube again. And Mike said the same. But you guys are going to have to do a GoFundMe, pay for, and produce it credible, verifiable, repeatable evidence from whoever that Mike's assertion about the microphone being capped at nine and blocking out the rest of the frequency uh, or, or not, not passing the frequency was wrong. Because that's the assertion you've got to prove is wrong. It's not about white noise. It's about Mike proving that the 9 megahertz, 9, 10 megahertz value or kilohertz value is wrong. So, so let's be clear. You so guys have got to go do, go and do a GoFundMe. Get the sound analysis done by somebody that you're happy with. So long as we can see who it is that's done it and we can check out their credentials in terms of the company and all that. Well, can't you agree to that first, both of you? Are you that's both what, that's what I'm saying right now. You've got to do a GoFundMe to provide the funds to do it because it's your assertion that Mike's wrong. Um, it, we need to see the analysis being done, like, you know, what the technique is, what they've done. And, and, and the answer that the question that you're answering is very narrow and specific. Mike's assertion is that Geo's mic is capped at about 10 uh, kilohertz. Mine is the one that goes through to about 15 or so. 
So Mike's assertion is that all of the sound, not noise, sound went through Geo's microphone only. And my microphone did nothing. Okay. You've got to debunk that. If you can't debunk that and you go on to anything else that's not that point, then you fail and that that point gets lost and you guys have got to surrender your channels. The point's very clear and it's very precise and, and narrow. Was Geo's mic casting the sound that we heard or not? That's the question. I'll just give you an answer. Yeah, it was because it was only capped at nine kilohertz and that was the same kilohertz range that Soundly was coming through at. If he'd have been coming through your mic, he'd have come through at 15 kilohertz. He didn't because it was coming through Correct. Geo's mic. Correct. Geo's mic. So what Sean's got to show is that this representation here is wrong in some way. So he's got to get a GoFundMe for an independent company to invalidate this result by showing that this sound that's here is actually coming through at the full frequency like the mouse clicks did because that's the mouse clicks were quieter than this at full frequency. But for some reason, this just stops down here and it just so happens to line up with Geo Streamer's mic. So that's the point that Sean's got to prove that's wrong. I'll put my channel on it. Michael put his on it. Hey, if P. you come back with anything that's different to what Mike's shown in the, right. in the in the frequency spectrum and analysis, or show why that analysis is the wrong method to use, and you should you should be applying your method, which is the application to hell and back of the background, you can invalidate the application of or invalidate the, the uh, frequency spectrum analysis that has been provided that was done by two different people on two different programs and demonstrated live, then I will I will surrender my channel. But you've got to yeah. debunk the point that he makes and no other point. Well, hang on. It, Whose channels are on the line here? Let's, let's be soundly, clear. Uh, soundly, Bill Strieber and Sean Hufford. And who else? Mike and Mike's. Right. Why, are people, why would anyone make a bet to you when you don't, you don't come through when you lose a bet? Oh, because I didn't lose it. So, P-Mars, fuck off. Get out. No, 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 no. No need. Stop that. No. No. It's it, it's a distraction. It's no. literally a distraction. No. He's come on the panel. Yeah, it's a distraction to. from Riley's YouTube drama. I mean, no one really cares. If anyone in the watching likes Riley's drama, please hit that like button. Hey, these are the people that defend the globe. He's gone. He's gone. He's totally That's ruined it. the point. The no, point is not. simple. Geo Streber, Soundly, and Sean Hufford... I've got to prove that Mike's assertion that it was Geo Streber's mic and only Geo Streber's mic presenting the noise is wrong. Now he's got to do that by either showing that the spe uh, frequency spectrum and analysis pre presented a wrong diagram, which would be this one. Where's it gone? He's got to show that either that representation is wrong or the process that they applied to get that was wrong. Now what that means is that the background noise being amplified to hell and back. Right is correct riley you you've gone on for five minutes about this I get it yeah but, but our i have a question I have a, I have a noobish noobish question that is are you sure yeah that the height of what you're seeing here is not just the the spectrum uh, with including volume yeah it does include the volume that's why there's, there's nothing there there is no volume there that's the, yeah, the, but the, if you look very careful at geostreber's lines yeah, they do if go a little bit indication higher. indication of volume, it does stick out of there. I so agree. You are just not... overall a lot louder. It doesn't... I agree. No, the line... No, 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 if no, this no. was purely on, about the spectrum Anthony, of available... No, of, of a, what you're looking sound, at... The resolution, on. then I would say, yeah, this is absolutely definitive proof. But if it includes the volume... The volume is depicted by the intensity. So if you look at the section that's got, yeah, go back to the definition, blah, blah... Where the arrow is pointing, you can see that it's a very faint set of lines. That denotes volume. The lines going up and down depict frequency range. So Geo Streber's mic is capped at 9 kilohertz. So the frequency range never goes beyond 9 kilohertz. And neither does Soundly. If it had been coming through Riley's mic, then it would have come through at the full 15k frequency range that the Blue Yeti can pick up. And this is proven by the mouse clicks. When the mouse clicks, even though it's considerably quieter, so the mouse clicks are at minus 60 dB, sound is at minus 40 dB, or there or thereabouts, don't quote me on those numbers, but that for the sake of this example, about 20 dB quieter, you've got some mouse clicks from Anthony. And what do you know? They're mouse clicks in the full frequency range. Yeah. 
Right. So the uh, for the the height of the lines is the volume, and the color is no. The... You're not listening, Arwin. The height of the the lines is not the volume. That's what I've just specifically said. It is not. The height of the lines depicts the frequency range. The intensity of the colors depicts the volume. Yes, that was what I was going to ask next. So yeah, I got to switch around. Sorry. My bad. Okay. Actually, the the color is also it's the d density. So you have more of a higher range. So that's getting your mid range and base. Uh, that. Now the only reason why this is going. Work. The only reason why this is going deep like this is because Shauna keeps redoubling down on basically saying that Mike's not doing what he should be doing. He's got it wrong. And Mike's taking it like, what on earth are you talking about? You're unqualified. You don't know what you're doing. You, you admit that you're a, an enthusiast, but you claim to be audio guy. You're passing yourself off as something that you're clearly not. You're wrong. So Mike's saying that he's got this wrong because he's applying nonsense to support a muddying of water. And Gio, uh, Sean's position is that Mike's got it wrong. And I, I, I accept what I've got on screen right now represents the truth. I accept that this shows that the frequency was limited to Geo's mic and only Geo's mic, and the volume represents the sound. Okay. I'd also like to add that there's a few people in the chat going, this is dull, this is boring. These will be the people that are cheerleading for Soundly, Sean, and Geo when they're claiming that Anthony's mic's open. Even though it's the exact same subject, they'll all be there cheerleading. Yeah, when it's us pointing out that they're liars and fraud, suddenly it's very boring. No, yep. they've just been caught. And now it's suddenly not that important to you, Globeheads. Well, I'm just going to take that as a tell. Please stop talking about this. If we make you think we're bored of it, no, we're going to rub their faces in it. And every single yep. time they come back with another boring hangout about how they're not lying, we'll just come out with actual facts and proof backed up by professional sound engineers and say, no, Geo's a liar. It could only be coming through his mic because it's capped at 9K, and so is Soundly. They are coming through the mic. And what do you know? Soundly's, uh, sorry, Geostreamer's mic has got a known issue for bleeding sound. What a funny coincidence. Not a coincidence. It's just Geo being, let's get the terminology right, we'll use Soundly's terminology, coached. Geostreamer Alex Nickel is being coached by Soundly. Agreed. He was, his mic is bleeding soundly. So we got yeah. Jose that's turned up. Is he? Is he going to go live? Jose, hey, Jose. There? is he there? He was. He, he's joined. Jose. No, he's not. No, Where he's is he? Not here. He joined and then left again. Oh, he's oh right. Okay. Rough signal, probably. But yeah, he doesn't have a great signal. I, I, that. I just to be nitpicky. There was one more thing you could even do to absolutely top it, and that is to do another uh, sound analysis test. Just oh, that's coming. You. And then uh, see if you could get a very low noise, like for example, uh, uh, your phone, somebody talking over your phone next to your mic and see if that low sound, how much of a spectrum that would have. Yeah, that's been done. It shoot up. And if you have that to compare, Owen. Owen. absolute definitive proof. It's, it's done. That's been done. Yeah. Yeah. It's you been have done. the graphs for that. Yeah. Well, before we before you go into that though, you need concession. Well, you're not a concession, but you'll need an agreement from these guys that they're willing to put their channels on the line. Of course, of course. They're never going to yeah. do that. Uh, well, that's what they're going to have to do because the other the only other way to get out of this is for them to concede and back down and admit that it was soundly that was talking to Geo Streber in a microphone that shouldn't have been there. But you guys are all doubling down on it, so you've either got to produce the hangout that proves that we're wrong because that would prove that I was listening to a hangout. And then, hey, what do you know? There's the hangout. Um, even though it goes against the microphone, but we'll, I'll accept that the microphone point is valid if you produce the hangout, right? Or drop the point and say, yeah, fuck it, we lied. Shit. Riley, you're forgetting they have another option. What's that? Well, they can also just ignore and forget it. That's one of yeah, their most favorite doubling. strategies. You know that. Sean's doubling down and doubling down and doubling down, so Sean must be absolutely... <laughs> totally confident well didn't you you had this is your second channel isn't it Anthony and I remember your first channel was quite popular too and uh, if I remember correctly I saw a, a hangout with Reds not three months ago probably before then um, and he mentioned that there was um, a reason why he got rid of that channel and in his opinion that was because you'd made a bet about whether if you saw part of the, the the lunar eclipse or something like this then you would, you know, you would give up your channel, and that's exactly what you did. So essentially, you have done this in the past. You have made 
the claim that about, about something if you've been proved wrong and then you've gone and removed your channel and got rid of it so it's not like that you wouldn't do this no 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 no, no. that's that's not true that's if that no that's not that's true. what he says so i don't know what how that went but i didn't know that you you got rid of your channel I only removed my channel because I had too many trolls and I couldn't deal with them on my own. And I needed to, I felt that I needed to depersonalize my account because they were calling me names by name. And I thought, well, I'll do what they do and I'll make a pseudonym. And that's what I did instead. So I removed everybody off it, started all over again. And now I'm back in the same position I was in before, but without my personal name being on it. So now they call me like Riley, but they don't, it's not linked to my account now. It's just linked to um, my name, but it's not my account and my name. So, but the reason why I removed my account was primarily because I felt that the trolls were being too trolly and they were getting too close to my real world and I didn't want it. So I removed my person from it and put it back in as a pseudo person because I felt that that was the better way to move forward. The fact that it coincided with a perception by Red's rhetoric is irrelevant. Uh, that's his opinion and he's entitled to his opinion. But I was getting trolled to death at, the po at that point in time, and that was the reason why I moved it. I also wanted to spend more time researching why the moon didn't appear to exist in the eclipse. There was no evidence of the moon, and that took me like two and a half, three weeks of being on it all day, every day. And that was another reason why I wanted to come offline for a while, because I just needed to drop out. So I dropped out. But it had absolutely nothing to do with Red's interpretation of his opinion. So if that's what he thinks, he's entitled to think that. That's his opinion. But we all know what opinions are like. Okay. All right. Did you have something you wanted to do, share? Um, who's it that's got their screen shared? I can't see your name because you're screen shared. Neil, did you want to share something? Neil? Neil, hello. Neil. Yeah. Did you want to share something? I've just been looking through those um, things in your Google Drive. The moon images. In whose Google Drive? I don't know whose drive it is. It's it's on the bottom of um you know when you go into your your page you've got a Google Drive saying on the bottom. Yeah, it's Apollo's. Who's, who's, it's Apollo's. Anthony's Whose page? Yours. Mine. No. Oh, I mean it's Nathan's. Apollo's. I've said it three times. Apollo's. Is this Apollo's, yeah? Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Sorry. No, you don't need to apologise. He's he's shared. He's been kind enough to share us some massive, re massively high resolution, massive in physical size images that he's been scanning into his computer. Very time consuming mm -hmm. work, and they're completely original. You know, uh, not completely original. They're completely unique, as in they're not published. Hello again, P. Um, Nine Eleven was an inside job. Don't kick him, yes, please. He's, he's welcome here. If he's got a differing opinion and wants to disagree with what's being said, he's allowed to. You know, I've been timing people out in the peanut gallery because they're going, oh, bored. Well, sod off then. But if you want to criticise, come on the panel and criticise. P's here to criticise. He's welcome to. Yeah, but hang on. He's not criticising. Yeah, he is. He's adding nothing. Just leave it. Okay? He's not uh, swearing. Was... He's not doing his N-word routine. Uh, I was criticising how you just go on and on about this drama with Geostrober, and it's just, it's just annoying. It's just the most well, boring. We got out. it. We got it. Well, hang on. Let me just play that. Up. But it just they just need to do this. So just leave them. Just Could I just clear them. that point up though? Because this is a this is a new twist on it today. It's where the people have uh, actually laid their channels on the line in their belief that they're correct. So we have Anthony and we have who's the other guy? Anthony. Hello. Nobody's gonna delete the Anthony channel. Anthony left. If Anthony people left. If right, people okay. lose the bet, if people lose the bet, they don't pay up. You know? Well, I think it's Mike, Mike Kavanaugh and, and Anthony have both laid their channels on the line saying that they believe that they are correct. So I think it is a, it's a step different than what's been talked about the last few days. So it is a move forward. It needs discussing. A challenge has been made. You might find it boring, P, but this goes to credibility. We would assert non-stop that they're lying about the shape of the earth and disingenuous about how they debate about it. In this instance, they've been caught red-handed with soundly coaching Geo. Now, if they'd have just admitted it, this would have gone away a long time ago. But they're doing hangout after hangout after hangout, putting the blame at Anthony's doorstep. Well, that's fraud. It's outrageous. It's a complete lie. And it's been proven beyond doubt that it's Geo Schreiber being coached by Soundly. Now, if they want to carry on lying about it night after night, they're welcome to. But we'll respond to them saying, no, 
You can dig yourself this hole as long as you like. We'll just keep pouring the sand back in on top of you. No problem. If the audience find it boring, okay, sod off. No worries. But we're going to rub these globe head lying sod's faces in it. Everyone knows those people are liars and they, they have no content or anything interesting to offer. They just talk about flat earthers all the time. They're, they're, they're even worse than flat earthers. <laughs> I don't know. I'll agree to that. But yeah, just let them do their thing. And yeah, if you have something else that may be an interesting subject, then just bring that up. Anyway, Riley, come on, come back. Don't be ridiculous. I mean, yeah, they're liars, but I mean, it, it doesn't even matter if uh, Gio is getting coaching from Soundly and it's just. No, it matters that they lied about it. That's what matters. They, 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 they've been caught in so many lies, though. Like, yeah, everyone knows awesome. they're liars. Well, that's not what people were saying up until a few days ago. They were saying, it's coming through your mic, Mike Anthony. Whereas now they're saying, this is boring. A bit like UP. I mean, I don't know how many hangouts we need of people analyzing this audio. It, <laughs> I don't well, get it. Look, this show is not just about entertainment, okay? We spent a lot, lot of weeks on Isle of Man footage. Well, some people thought that was getting boring. So what? We're going through the details. Do you want to see something more boring? It's just like the typical YouTube thing people do to get attention and views. They like stir up drama. No, no, no. You're on it's all YouTube. All YouTube is just drama. No. You're up, Bronte. Pete, Pete, do you want to have a look at my screen, mate? See if you can uh, see where the refraction line is on this mountain. See where it comes down. It looks absolutely sweet as it doesn't look like it's the join. Um, I think that's kind of proven there is no refraction in this video. But all of these buildings shouldn't be there on a ball. What do you think to this? Uh, I was hearing some sound through that. Who was that? I think what? all the stuff we see on the earth matches up to the ball. Like, I don't... I don't well, I've that. just explained to you that... See this lighthouse? You shouldn't see it. That's not there. And at the start of the video, you see that there isn't a, a refraction line to show that these are being loomed. It's a very clear day. Yeah, well, you're just telling me I shouldn't be seeing something. But when I you have actually... All the measurements in my video. Uh, okay, on. well, that's great, Ranty. But I've seen people map out 3D models as to what they, you would expect to see on a sphere, and it matches up with reality perfectly. So I, I just, just want to just point something out, Pete. This isn't a model, this is a video. So it's not that we're telling you what is or what is not there. You can see it with your own eyeballs. There it is, we see it, it's there. Yep. Straight line of sight, minimal observer height. And very little uh, atmospheric distortions going on today. No mirroring, no refraction, no, no nothing really. It was just Yo. a very clear hey, day. Earth, Ginger. Hello. Hello. Just a very clear day. Looking at buildings that we shouldn't see. Hmm. Right, look, look if you go these. by the model, which ignores perspective, none of this should be there. So, if you're a globe head, this is all observed phenomena, right? This is a phenomena of a building being there. No, it's not a phenomena. We just see a building because it's flat. No explanation required whatsoever on a flat plane. He's on the beach. He looks a long way away and sees stuff on the other shore because it's flat. No further explanation required. It's a fat Morgana. Say again? It's a fat Morgana. You want to call it a fat Morgana and claim that it's an no. observed phenomenon? No. <laughs> a fat Morgana only works when it's really hot. <laughs> yeah, so I just. Really hot. I really wanted to stick on this front part that, you know, the start of the video, though, because this mountain, you, you can't, you know, normally you get this crappy refraction layer at the horizon, don't you? Well, we're not seeing any of this on the mountain. This is double back, nothing at all. It's completely smooth. Now, if this was being loomed, there would be a cutoff point somewhere, but there isn't. And this is from an elevation of just four feet, 18.7 miles. 
How how am I supposed to know that we aren't supposed to be able to see these things? I just have to trust you. I love it. How are we supposed to know that we're not able to see these things, Pete? You can see them. They are there. In front of you? They're in front yeah, of you. That's, you said you that you're take, not supposed to Do you need to take my word them. for it that you can see them, P? Do you need to take my word for it or do you just need to look at it? No, you said on a ball you're not supposed to be able to see it, right? That's correct. You said that? That's correct. So how do I know that's true? Because there's supposed to be an earth curve in the way. Well, how do I know there's not? Uh, because you can see the stuff. that We're going around in circles, P, with you saying, how do I know that we're not supposed to see this? We do see it. It's just there, P. There's no explanation required if you accept that it's just there because it's flat. Or, flat. or you can say, we do see it, but it shouldn't really be there. There should really be an earth curve in the way. Well, who cares what you think should be in the way? We do see it. End of story. Yeah, but I don't I don't think you've really established that we're not supposed to see it on a ball. So uh, sorry, we yeah, do we see it. it. Forget what we think we should or shouldn't see on a ball, P. You keep doing this. Who cares what the model says? We do see it. It is there. Right, and that but it doesn't oh, it, it doesn't we use the models all your models, curve calculators, all these things. It's you know it shouldn't be there according to all these systems. I, I don't think that's true though. Like I oh, think really so what system wait, 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 wait. So I think we're I think we're seeing exactly what we're supposed to see on a ball. Yeah, that's right. A flat earth. Long distance Oh he said he said on a ball. He said height. We're seeing exactly what we should see on a ball. You didn't let him finish. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So I guess we should see China from the west coast of. Uh, you're, you're, where are you? West coast? You sound stoned and. <laughs> <laughs> you need to speak a little quicker. My, my slow flow is remarkable. Yeah, Peace to Mateo. Now we smoke yeah. weed like Tony Mateo sniffed a yayo. There we go. Anyway, so Nailed he's it. on the beach, P. He's, he's in the water. Yeah? And he's looking at stuff on the other beach. 18 miles away. Nearly 19 miles away. Apparently we should see the other side of the ball. Because that's what we're supposed to see in a ball. Oh. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Just see forever and we can see other sides of balls. But what we do have is flat water, and flat water can't exist on a ball model. And I'll keep what? repeating that. It's impossible. You can't have flat water. How come we can only see one side of the moon? So we don't the moon, know. We're not, we're, not looking looking at the moon. we're not looking at the moon. We're looking at something that is nearly 19 miles away and is only possible to see if there's nothing blocking it. And what do you know? We can see it. There isn't anything blocking it. It's just there. No ifs, buts, or maybes about it. There it is. 18.7 miles flat as a pancake. Bang in your face. Still looking for the curve, though. I, I am trying, Nathan. I know it's housekeeping. You keep sending me out. I keep coming back with flat. These are wicked images, by the way, Ronty. I think, I think it looks pretty curved. <clears throat> <laughs> Come on. Yeah, good footage. <laughs> If we stop it here, look at the mountain, because there should be a cutoff point along the mountain where there's this refraction where all this is being loomed up and it will meet reality. So uh, I, I'm not seeing it. I'm really not seeing it. I'm not I'm seeing not seeing it. Now the entire thing is loomed up. The entire image is just... The mountain as well. Yeah, everything. <laughs> okay. That's... Yeah, it's totally just def yeah, deflecting from the ball shape into the flat plane. That's what fractal looming does. Could I just say something to Pete? Sure. Um, I don't know if you've heard of a channel called Enslaved Vinyl Media. I recommend mm -hmm. he goes and watches his latest video. I don't think he's here any longer. What is it, Enslaved by? Enslaved by No Media. You might learn a couple of things if you watch that video. All right. Can you give him a bit more info? What's it about? It's about the mountains in the distance, Tacoma, 
Seattle and somewhere else. He's just brought a great, great one out. It's his latest Mount, one. Mount Rainer, too, I think it looks like. He's seeing mountains at 118 miles away. Quite right, the distance. How does that work on a ball? Well, what size are the mountains? Um, off the top of my head, I'm not too sure. Big. Mountain but he's size. at elevation as well, though. He's at, he's, he's at elevation, but to see them mountains. Does the guy have a video? Pardon? Is there a video of it? Yeah, yeah. That's in the channel. Enslaved by No Media is the channel. And it's his latest video. Okay. Check it out. Has nobody... Um, does nobody really watch him, like? It's a great I channel. I, I just wanted for a moment to uh, refer everyone to the video that Mark Sargent posted. We brought it up in the show before. Uh, the sun going behind mountains 175 miles away. So. No, there's so much uh, photography evidence of the flat earth, but, you know, they, they Nathan, don't. Nathan, if you could present that. me for a moment. It's on now, right? Uh, are we? Right. So. This is the video. Does it need volume? But on this specific day, the sun gets behind and creates a silhouette. So you'll see that coming up here shortly. And the fact of the matter is that these mountains are not floating and levitating in the air. They're just not. They're not a mirage. Uh, doesn't have any of the characteristics of mirage. There's no towering. There's no floating. There's no distortion. There's nothing. That is the mountains of Kanagal. Now, when you hear people say, oh, it's just a, this mountain here, this peak is 9,000 feet, but the rest of the mountain chain is there. So granted, can you see down to 1,000 feet or down to the uh, shore? No, because you're looking over a vast amount of water. And again, reading these things that I read today are just more backup of that, of exactly what's going on here. But here, if you look at, uh, this is not a mirage. You'll see this is not rising, this is not shimmering. This is the mountains of Kanagao. And if you put in the um, curve calculator here, uh, you know, an eye height of a thousand feet at that church in Alash and a target distance of 175 miles, you get a hidden feet of 12,380. The mountain peak of Kanagao is 9,400. So you're talking about 3,000 feet. These mountains should be the very tip right here should be 3,000 feet below the curve. So what what do you believe in that's floating these to the top? What is what is lifting mountains to the top? It's, it's just not what they say. And so, you know, for me, I'm not going to just take their words. Oh, this is, just, oh, okay, that yeah, must be an astronomical thing. The sun's lifting. Th the sun doesn't lift mountains up. If these mountains are behind the curve, I wouldn't be able to see them. I cannot see. Good stuff. I had actually seen it before. I think a few people have shared it. So that was yeah, Jared, not, not Mark Sargent. Anyway. Uh, it was on Mark Sargent's channel, but that was Jaronism. Jaronism. Yeah, okay. but yeah, guys, that is such proof right there. Try to explain that with Fractalumi. <laughs> Had you seen that before, P? Five miles. It was directed at you, that video, P. So have you actually seen it before, that one? Uh, no, I'm going to go look at it real quick. Wait, is this... Why are we having two... It's Pete or Patrick? Now it's a different account. <coughs> P. Uh, I'm Patrick is my name. Okay, so you were just on as Pete. Anyway. P. Mars. Hey, wait, this is the wrong video. It's on Mark Sargent's channel. 
is a pretty savage picture. <laughs> Maybe I should take that it was, off. It was literally just playing like 30 seconds ago. <laughs> it is a pretty savage picture, to be honest. It's awesome. I want to see more of that of that kind of thing, preferably even further away. I'm not. I'm not a fan of IPS. I think he. Uh, I think he's a con artist, and he scammed a bunch of flat earthers out of money. I won't disagree with you there. What? what why? What, what evidence have you got that he scammed anything out of anybody? Um, I think that's what he said himself. Got a citation, a quote. I don't. I don't have it saved, but I know that he's he's talked about how you know, he's not really a flat earther and he just infiltrated <coughs> the community to scam people. He's basically admitted it. No, he hasn't. He admitted that he was not a flat earther anymore in a press release that was trying to attract the attention of the mainstream media. And in that press release, he claimed that he had infiltrated flat earth, but was then moving back onto the ball. Since doing so, I don't know what's happened in regards to whether or not he sold that book, which is essentially a book for the mainstream public, a soft entrance into flat earth. And that's how he just positioned it. For me, that's just good marketing. Uh, Kathek Kathexis came to me and he told me that IPS was part of like this uh, cult um, that goes around on the internet and gets into communities and manipulates and scams money and takes the piss out of everything. They don't. They don't like like he was involved in this Scientology thing community before Flat Earth and he did the same things. Oh, I believe that. Just by like watching him, I I knew he was a liar because he would talk about conspiracies and secret societies that I'm familiar with, and he would get the information incorrect all the time. So just, yeah. And he would barely on, actually on. talk about flat Earth. Hold on, if this was Greater Sapien, right? There'd be an insistence on evidence in terms of him scamming people out of twenty k. Now with IPS, so far word salad, no evidence. What have you got to actually back up that he's scammed people? Oh, I don't have any evidence. I, uh, there's people that are suspicious that he's actually behind that polar flight fraud, too. They think he is part of that. Again, any evidence to show any connections whatsoever between IC IPS and the Polar Explorer, whatever it was called? No, I don't. I don't, I don't really care enough to have evidence for things just, just, i don't just, try and even if i did have evidence i mean you shouldn't believe me right well i'd believe you a lot quicker if you had evidence let's put it that way it's just rumors no, yeah it's just rumors right i don't well, think well, it's it. ips either but uh yeah he, he might be involved in all kinds of things he's intelligent enough and he has the attitude to actually do that but yeah, if he does, then he's very careful because we're not finding any evidence and he's not being forward about it. So he's just IPS is IPS. But I don't trust him. Well, that's a better way to phrase it. You know, I think we should phrase our statements you know, high, being highly suspicious of, of a channel or something like, oh, he's this or he's that or whatever. It's a little with no evidence, just just my opinion, but whatever. To paraphrase what Dan uh, said back in the day, you all guys remember Dan. Um, Which Dan? I've got, his name now has eluded me. He used to be called Bible Dan. Tiger Dan, that's it. So Tiger Dan would say, chew the meat and spit out the bones. Unfortunately, when it comes to IPS, there's not a lot of meat concerning Flat Earth. He barely actually talked about it. Didn't really have any opinions about it. And he stuck to his occult and secret society stuff and trannies a lot. And I always found that very annoying. Just and put it on billboards. In the beginning, I did ask him even directly, like, yeah, what, what do you think? 
uh, what are your stance on the possibilities and he just didn't answer the question and started banning me well, he did that with a lot of people and let me just get it straight you're saying he's, he's not talked about flat earth but in actuality he got flat earth in front of tens of thousands of people on billboards and got into the mainstream press with mad mike putting flat earth on the side yes. of a rocket through sponsorship so right. very flat earth related i would have said no not really it's more advertising and hyping up and memeing and that's what he was doing a lot and was yeah. pretty good at it but when it comes to content he didn't actually talk about flat earth not really he had a, he did, just he had as a, a movement debate. and he did as a flat earth debate with somebody what? Of course he talked about flat earth. He had a flat earth debate with people. Uh, your volume is very low. He said he did a debate with right. somebody. Okay, sure. Well, I do a debate here every day. <laughs> was that flat earth ginger talking none. just then? Who was just talking? Earth flatner. Earth. Who is it that was quiet? <laughs> Earth flattener. Earth flattener. I am. That's better. Yeah, he did a few debates, whatever, but he he did do debates. Yeah. Oh really? And what what was his stance? Uh, the Earth is obviously and observably flat. And with that, I'm going to say first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this debate. And a massive thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible. If you hated the show, then you know exactly what to do. But if you like the show, maybe consider sharing it with a friend or subscribing if you have not done so already. I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!